Hey everybody, um, thanks for joining me again for one of my at home in my kitchen cooking videos. Um, long day, it's Friday, I'm tired, I'm starving, which is often how I end up in my kitchen. Um, and I can't wait for any of this food to be done. So you've probably seen this video, but I've got myself a watermelon radish that I am going to mandolin here. While I'm dancing, uh, I'm gonna take those. I'm just gonna throw them out here on my little plate. I'm gonna take a little bit of a very good quality olive oil. Let's pour that over there, just a little dab. A little bit of salt. This is um, pink Himalayan salt. And now I have a little snack to be eating while I'm cooking. Okay. A lot of you liked um, the way we did this video last time, which was I did not edit. I just talked all the way through it. So here we go. Now you're going to have to listen to me too. Um, I'm trying to stay on my anti-inflammatory no alcohol thing, so I've got myself some sparkling water. You should be drinking three liters of water a day. I think that's what they say. Three liters of water a day. I think there's four cups in a liter approximately. So that would be four eight ounce glasses, eight eight ounce glasses, 12. I've usually heard it's eight, but my gym is saying try 12. I don't know, I don't think I'm getting there. Anyway, <laughs> okay. Radish is going aside, that's just a snack. Kind of reminiscent of a potato chip for me. Um, what we've got going here, I promised you air fryer, and today we are using air fryer. Um, this is a Philips. It's called the Twin Turbo Star Technology Philips Air Fryer. Let me show you what the inside of it looks like. This is what uh, the inside of it looks like, um, and that's where the food's going to go. I have to fix that. Oh. Okay, that's gonna have to turn around. Um, let's see. There, just goes in there, drops in there. Okay. That's gonna come up in a minute. So, mandolin is going in the sink. What we're making is a uh, sauteed vegetables, um, and I just pulled out what was in my refrigerator. So, I'm gonna start that first with some avocado oil on medium high heat. Um, I'm going to chop up this broccoli. So how are you guys today? How was your week? We had Halloween week. That was fun. Hope you guys had a good time. I love Halloween. I used to do really big parties um, for friends and neighbors when my daughter was young, but I don't really do that anymore. So for Halloween, I went to the gym. Look at me being all healthy. Um, so you just wanna make sure that your broccoli is cleaned and I like to get it down into little, pretty small bite sizes. Okay, that's going in. And this is just gonna be a nice, healthy vegetable medley. Um, I've got a red pepper here. I like to cut off the top, put it on its side, and then I just go down each side and that way I never have to deal with those nasty seeds. They just come away. Um, I'm going to slice these about a quarter inch wide and then same thing the other direction. That's going in the pan. Um, hopefully this will be a pretty fast meal. I'm really hungry. Uh, and I know most of you um, don't have a ton of time to be cooking, but you can still uh, eat healthy and you can still enjoy your food. I think part of the trick is having a healthy food in your refrigerator to cook with. So at the beginning of the week, some of the things I like to make sure are in my refrigerator are eggs, um, Plain Greek, plain Greek yogurt, um, 
asparagus, broccoli, zucchini, peppers, cucumbers, uh, a couple of bags of washed spinach, maybe some washed romaine lettuce whole, kind of mimics a, a taco shell. Um, what else do I keep in there? Mushrooms, um, could be portobello, crimini. These are shiitakes. Um, carrots, celery, onions, sweet potatoes, garlic. I think if you, then in your pantry, rice, um, some seeds, some nuts, and then some seasonings. Champagne vinegar, olive oils, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, um, turmeric, salt, pepper, ginger, um, cinnamon. I don't know, that's, that's sort of in general, if you've got that, you sort of have go-to meals. Um, okay, so we're moving on to the zucchini. And I love the rainbow thing that's going on here. Just tells me that I'm uh, getting a lot of different kinds of nutrients. Um, so you notice I just did it in fours. And <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine today and we both used the word janky. I don't, I, it's, I, I don't know like what category of word that goes into. I think it's okay when you use it, applying it to yourself in sort of a self-deprecating way. It's probably not great to say to somebody else, that's janky. Um, but I'm just telling you right now, my knife cuts on this are a little janky. Uh, I could make them probably better, but I'm hungry and in a rush. And the main thing with your knife cuts is that you have symmetry in them so that everything is cooking kind of at the same time in the same way and that they're in a size that you're going to want to eat. Um, I'm kind of a big stickler for that because I think a lot of people who don't like vegetables or say they don't like vegetables just don't like the way those vegetables have been cooked or prepared and part of that is how you slice them. So I think for fun just to have something different, slice this squash in half and then I'm just gonna um something I heard something I think it was a motorcycle so then this won't be cut exactly the same as the zucchini it'll look pretty um and again this is probably going to be too much food for me and often when I'm cooking um I like to cook more than I think I'm going to eat because if I have these extra vegetables, then tomorrow morning, that's an easy omelet. You just reheat them, throw a couple eggs on top. You've got a little omelet, little healthy protein vegetable thing in the morning. Um, or you can have it tomorrow. Okay, so the last thing, all my vegetables are washed in case I didn't say that. Um, the last thing I'm doing is slicing the mushrooms. And then I'm gonna turn this on. I think if I'm cooking in real time with you, um, you're gonna have to put up with the sound of the stove and the sound of the air fryer. Hopefully that won't bug you too much. Oh my gosh, I got some comment um, from last week's video, which I actually thought it had fairly decent sound, by the way. Um, and most of you said that it did. Somebody doesn't like me. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't like me, but, um, uh, somebody, yeah, somebody was like, this is the stupidest video. This is, no, I think it was, this is the worst video on YouTube. I mean, that's, that's harsh. The worst video on YouTube. So there's an example of how you do not take things seriously and you do not give a shit about people that say things like that about you. Okay. Um, this last thing is raw turmeric and you want to be careful with this use a cutting board um, the the color on this is very very intense so uh, this will dye your marble you can get it out with uh, bone of me but um, it'll dye your cutting board so it'll dye your clothes so you be careful but it's also very good for you 
Um, so I'm just zesting like a little arm of this turmeric arm, probably a finger. It's probably not a whole arm. That would be like this much turmeric. If I had that much turmeric, I'd be so anti-inflamed, I'd probably disappear. <clears throat> um, okay, so that is going in there. And I can go in the sink. Okay, so this is gonna go on now on a kind of a medium high heat. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of lemon and I always like to have a little bit of acid and everything. So I've got that in there. Time for a handful of that. A little salt. A little pepper. All right, that's gonna start cooking away. So we now have, we are doing sea bass in the fryer and sweet potato fries. So I'm gonna cut up the sweet potato fries, um, cutting off the end. This is a pretty long sweet potato, so I'm actually gonna cut it down the middle and that's gonna be the size of our fries. But I'm gonna get this going in the fryer. So, and you know what? I watched The View. I don't know if you guys watched The View, but I watched The View and Megan McCain, um, who I adore, I actually adore, I adore all of them, regardless of their politics or whatever. I just, I think they're exemplary, exemplary, exemplary. Okay, I'm not gonna get that word. You can all write me in about that. And I'm not even drinking. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah, they're all a great example. <laughs> of um, getting along, I really like that. And I love that they, uh, they just are all, they're fun to watch. So I heard her the other day talking about that she tried to make salmon for her husband and she felt like it was a fail. And we all fail all the time at lots of things. But if she's watching, um, this air fryer might be a good idea for her. I am not an air fryer spokesperson. Uh, they pay me nothing. This is just something I believe in and it makes it easy to cook. I don't use it all the time, but I do like it. So you just turn on this button um, on the bottom and I'm gonna be doing both the sweet potato fries and the sea bass at 400. So I'm gonna set a, a timer for like three minutes to just kind of get it going while I'm talking to you. So all that this sea bass needs, it's just a, a fresh piece of sea bass this is probably enough for one serving. I think it's about a half a pound. Um, I'm gonna spray both sides with that fabulous olive oil that has no calories. And I think somebody was commenting, which I really appreciated, um, that the reason, because I was saying, how can something that you know have calories have no calories? And it says zero right there. And they were saying that because of the amount that comes out in that dispenser, it's probably not measurable, so they get to write zero. So I'm gonna go with it. There's zero calories in that oil. Uh, so it was oil on both sides, and then a little bit of salt on, and pepper on one side, and then when I turn it over in the fryer, I will season the other side. So that's it. Um, that just, you pull this open, um, I think I already showed you that's the, what the pan looks like and I'm just going to set that down in there and close it up and I'm going to turn that on for six minutes and it's going to go. Okay, and while we're waiting for that, while that's cooking, let's see, we'll give this a little stir. So I really like these meals that um, you can get everything going at once. And of course, if you don't have an air fryer, it's not that that's really saving you that much time because if you were gonna cook sea bass in, on a pan on your stove, you would probably do three to four minutes on each side anyway, um, which I did in my fancy dinner video and I had ginger and butter and that was really yummy. But if you just don't wanna hassle with a lot of pans, and you do have an air fryer and it's just easy to stick it in there, you're probably using less oil, uh, so less calories, um, and it's just cooking and you're not worrying about it. So the only thing we're gonna have on the stove is these vegetables. 
they're going to be sweating out their water as they're sauteing, and that's a good thing. Um, so that's going to just cook away. And then we're going to chop this into fries. So I like to um, just go down the edge to get the skin off. And you'll probably notice, um, you know, I cook a lot of the same things for myself in different ways, but I'm usually sticking with a palette of salmon, sea bass, chicken, sometimes lamb chops, rarely, maybe ground turkey, um, sweet potatoes, the vegetables that I li listed to you, and whether you're roasting them in the oven or you're sauteing them on a pan or you're putting them out in a lasagna, vegetarian lasagna, um, you know, it's, it's all kind of the same foods. Uh, and because they're healthy and good for you and they taste good. So the trick with the fries is you just cut straight down and you're trying to get them all, I guess I'm doing about a quarter of an inch thick, but again, you just want them to be similar size so that they cook at the same time. And then I'm going to go across and try to give myself similar size fries there. This was actually a test uh, in cooking school um, that you had to do in a timed manner. And the teacher, um, the chef, came around with a ruler and like measured. And you didn't get to have a ruler. You had to do it by eye. And if you didn't do it right, you failed. I didn't fail that class. I did good. Um, I really enjoyed cooking school. Somebody was asking me the other day, what did I like most about cooking school? And I went to cooking school after um, filming Desperate Housewives, after it ended. And uh, I think one of the things I loved the most was just wearing my little student um, cooking outfit with my hair up in a ponytail and my little hat, no makeup. And that's the way I went to school every day. And um, it was just effortless and, and, oh, I just really had a lot of joy. It was a lot of joy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna do this one. And even this one potato, I think, is going to be too much for me. But again, I can use these sweet potatoes in the morning. I could chop them up into smaller pieces and, again, put an egg over them, even mix them with the vegetables, and then I've got sort of a hash, a sweet potato hash. Um, so I'm a big fan of cooking a little bit extra when you're bothering to do it and then keeping it and using it for lunch or, or breakfast the next day. Okay, so I've got all my fries. I think they're all separated. And how much time is left? Oh, only 46 seconds, so that's perfect timing. Because um, what we're gonna do, having more radishes, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that sea bass out and we're gonna let it rest while we're cooking the fries and while our saute is cooking. And then we're gonna put the fish back in for like two minutes to kind of rewarm it up and finish cooking it. And then everything should be done at the same time. And then I will get to eat because I'm very hungry. And you won't get to eat unless you go get this stuff and make it and then you'll get to eat. That's you should go to the store. Watch the video, decide if you like it, then go to the grocery store, get all the stuff, come back, watch the video again. Okay, so that is Temporarily finished. So 
we are just going to place that back on our little plate here. Then, I'm going to dump these all in here. And when this is back in here, I'm going to spray the fries with olive oil. And, I don't know if you remember me talking about this before, but these are my new best friends, the guys that started this company, Truffle Shuffle, SF. You should go check it out in San Francisco or online, truffleshufflesf.com. And this is, I think, the best truffle salt. Oh my God, that is so great that I've ever smelled. They source their um, salt from Bali and uh, no fakey, fakey stuff, like actual truffle essence, not some fakey kind of flavoring. So I'm putting some truffle salt there. I'm gonna put the timer to seven minutes and I'm gonna let that go. So we've got seven minutes and the sweet potato fries will be done. The vegetables are continuing to cook down. They're looking good. They're getting some browning on them. I like that. That's really good. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of water in this, not to steam them, just to get some of that browning off the bottom of the pan. There we go. And, um, I asked you guys if uh, you would be interested in writing me some questions to answer during my video. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to get my computer. I'm going to go to my YouTube channel. And I'm going to see what... Um, what you guys asked me. Okay. So, a couple days ago, I said, Hi, hatching changers. That's what I call you. Or hatching changelings. You know, hope you're out there bringing positive vibes to the world. Making yourself your best self. Um, that's what I said here. I hope you're putting some positive vibes out on this spooky sweet evening. I'm getting ready to shoot a video, that's what I'm doing right now, and I wondered if you have any questions you'd like answered while I'm cooking. Let me know, happy Halloween. All right, so it looks like we got 18 comments. Not sure I'll be able to answer them out, but okay. Um, when you were working on Lois and Clark, or Desperate Housewives full time, how did you manage uh, to find time to cook healthy food for you and your family. I love your channel and I love Lois and Clark. Oh, okay, and that's from Lois Suppies. Lois Suppies? Okay, that's a good question. Um, yeah, uh, it's hard. Um, hats off to moms and dads who try to do it all. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that bothered me when my daughter was young was kids' menus. I never understood the concept of kids' menus. Like, why do we think we can teach children three to nine that their choices of food are pizza, sliders, hot dogs, macaroni, cheese, and chicken fingers if we don't want them to grow up and have issues with obesity? So it was very important to me to offer my daughter broccoli and artichokes and truffle salt and truffle oil and um, I mean, interesting adult flavors, fish and different kinds of meat, um, beans, so that she would have this bigger, healthy palate when she grew up. And also involving her in the kitchen, which um, I don't know if you saw the video on the broccoli situation um, where we try to get a little Jack to eat broccoli. Um, so cute, that, that kid. But, you know, there are things kids can do without a knife in the kitchen. You can make that a part of their life when they're really young, and then it's just who they are. They're not struggling to try to stop eating crappy food and start eating good food. They just have the good food mentality right from the beginning. So 
I don't know, I just made the time. Um, I did things like this, like I'm trying to show you guys. I feel like, you know, we all have, I mean, you should see, I have shelves and shelves of the most gorgeous, uh, amazing cookbooks by the most amazing chefs that are just masters at what they do. And yeah, it's really fun to try to take the time to emulate some of that once in a while. But in general, no one has a full-time job and takes care of kids and also cooks like that in their own home. I don't even think the great chefs do. In fact, I know they don't, or at least I know some of them who don't. Um, so it was important to me to figure out how you could cook things quickly, maybe get stuff in the oven and then run around and do some of your other things. I'm really taking a long time with this question. Okay, I'm gonna go on. That's what I did. Thank you for watching Lois and Clark. I'm glad you liked it. Okay. Would love to know what your favorite episode of Desperate Housewives is. Um, for, that's from BB. Uh, well, the two that come to mind are absolutely the pilot, and then the one, I think it might have been the 100th episode, it had um, Bo Bridges in it. And I, I just loved that episode. I loved it so much. And actually, as much as I hated the whole thing to be over, I thought the finale was really solid. And um, that's a hard thing to do. Uh, lots of finales don't do justice to the show. And, um, and I thought it was really well done. And I miss it a lot. Um, OK. Uh, Peter Damien says, is there anything cool that you would want to learn how to cook but haven't gotten to yet? Oh, and he says, my cooking videos are wonderful. Thank you. Uh, yes, I mean, a ton of stuff. Like I was just alluding to all the great cookbooks with all the great chefs, like I would, I would love to be a fly on a wall at a restaurant like Alinea or the French Laundry. Or to be honest, I mean, it doesn't even have to be that amazing. I, 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 I mean, I have so much respect for great chefs who and, and great restaurants where the whole staff puts out this, this artful meals. So I guess that's a fantasy of mine to get to work in a kitchen like that um, and learn what they know. Uh, I once, I got to do one day uh, when I was in cooking school, I got to stodge for about 10 hours at Providence, which I think is a three Michelin star restaurant in Los Angeles with um, Chef Simaruski, who, uh, and I worked so hard that at one in the morning when I went to my car, I actually cried. Um, I don't think I went to the bathroom or sat down for the entire time I was there. And it was awesome. It was just awesome. You know when you love something, it's not work, right? Isn't that what they say? Okay. Oh, look at that. We didn't even get close to getting through all the questions. Okay, let me check this. So, um, I'm going to just show you guys. So that's, that's what that looks like. I'm going to let that go, just because we have so many questions, I'm going to let it go a couple more minutes. Fun. But I bet they're I bet they're done. But they can't they can burn in there, but I, they're not going to burn in two more minutes. So I'll answer a couple more questions because um, the these aren't quite ready yet. Um. Okay. Uh, are we going to see you soon in a new show or something? Um, I'm definitely developing something with a production company, and I can't really talk about it yet, but I'm super excited about it. And so the answer is yes, I'm trying. <laughs> and I have to want them, and they have to want me. So we're just finding the perfect fit. Um, but I'm really grateful that there are people like you out there. And that was uh, Giovanni, Giovanni, um, who maybe want to see me in something new. Um, you know, I. I I realized that Lois and Clark was on ABC Sundays at 8 for many years and a big hit, and Desperate Housewives was on ABC Sundays at 8 for many years and was a big hit. So I'm thinking for the trifecta, I gotta be on ABC at 8 o'clock for another few years. And then, you know, that'll be good. Things come in threes, that's what they say. Um, okay, oh, last one. Well, happy Halloween. My question is, what was your favorite horror film ever? 
I'm not a horror film fan in terms of like a movie like Saw. That's not really my thing. Uh, just adding a little more water. But I love movies like The Others or The Sixth Sense or The Shining. Um, those are the ones that come to mind that I could watch over and over. I tried to watch Friday the 13th the other day, and I didn't get very far. I mean, I and then I kept kind of dipping in and out of it, and I came back to it at one point when Jason was getting like, I don't know, graded by that machine when thing that was going around, and you know, you think he's you think he's dead like a thousand times, and he's never dead. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the, I think they're too much stress for me. That's what I've decided. I like comedies. Life is too stressful to want to add more stress with horror films. That said, I am very excited to go see Parasite. Um, I just, I saw the trailer and it looks like the best movie ever. So I'm super excited to see that. Okay, we've got our plate here. So I'm going to put a little bit of... Uh, these sweet potato fries. I think for me, that's probably enough. Um, I'm gonna put the rest of them here so that we can turn this fish over this time. We're gonna sprinkle that other side with a little pepper. I don't think we need any more salt. And that's gonna go in there to finish cooking for like two minutes. And then we're gonna be done. And then it's gonna be time to eat. And if you stayed with me all through the end, I want to th say thank you. And um, I'm just so grateful that you guys keep coming back to the channel. And I'm really enjoying it and enjoying the feedback I'm getting. Um, trying to get back out on the road to do more van therapies. I'm not sure if you heard, but when I went to the Women's Expo in Arizona, uh, after I finished that, I was on my way back in my van went kaput. So uh, Van is um, little Penelope, that's her name, in case you didn't know that. Uh, little Penelope is in the shop and the mechanic is giving her the once over. <laughs> it sounds like they're having a relationship, but they're not. Uh, so hopefully when the van is repaired, I will be back on the road in my van. One of my favorite places to be. All right. I think these are done enough too. So I'm gonna put a little vegetable across the plate. I think it's a good idea uh, to eat mostly vegetables. Um, so I'm gonna put that all the way across the plate. I always think it's a good idea to plate nicely for yourself. That's why I'm having my sparkling water out of a champagne glass. Oh, and by the way, Mark Cherry from the creator of Desperate Housewives gave all of the girls two of these glasses for Christmas one year. Inside little fact. Uh, okay, two seconds. And that's done. It chew. Oh my God. Okay. There it is. What do you think? Let me like get a fork. Tell you if I didn't eat. If I, I always think like, you know, you can't taste it. I could, I could throw this in the garbage, but I won't. I want to show you how when sea bass is done, it sort of just splits apart, almost like it's, it's very, and, and you can just, you can tell that it's done. Um, and sea bass is the most Delicious fish. I have in the fancy dinner, I do it with ginger and butter and that's actually beautiful too with lemon. But just like this, it's great. And these, perfectly done. Soft inside that truffle salt, just takes it over the edge. So there you go, that's dinner. Don't forget to check out Truffle Shuffle. I adore you. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you soon.